Yakov, appreciate you being here, of course. Do we see Michigan falling to fourth on a regular basis, or this could be reworded uh, based on some people's perspectives, actually elevating to fourth? Uh, Whoa. I, wow. I don't know. That's Mark saying that. <laughs> So, so we're talking from a program status, a year to year. Do we see Michigan? Do we see this headed off in a in a bad direction? More so than just the one season at two and four in twenty twenty. Well, I like that Penn State kind of got off the map last year. They were zero and five, and they've won their last four games. So, in my way of thinking, I think they've stabilized things a little bit at Penn State and should get back up there to eight or nine wins this year, if not even better than that. I think the biggest question is Indiana going to stay up there and the caliber of team that they had in a normal year was probably a 10 and two type team, maybe an 11 one, even if Ohio state's the only team that would have beaten them. We don't know because all the games weren't played, um, you know, without Penix, maybe they lose a game that, uh, that they wouldn't have uh, lost with him. But uh, and certainly they lost the bowl game without him. Um, so, you know, I, I have a hard time believing that Michigan is going to be on a consistent basis, you know, third, fourth, fifth in this, con in this division, I think. But that's about what they've been here the last several years. They've typically been in third, I guess, if you put Penn State second. So, um, I don't know. I think, I think they are going to, I think what, what's, what, what's difficult for them is trying to cope with what is the reality of the year 2021, which is that Ohio state is a preferred destination, uh, essentially, uh, for the, anybody who is, north of the Mason-Dixon line and east of the Mississippi River. I mean, and that takes in about half the population or, or maybe a little less than that, I guess. And, you know, it's the premier college football program in this footprint. And that goes stretches beyond the Big Ten, stretches beyond any other conferences that have teams in this footprint, the ACC, the Big 12, whoever else. So uh, to me – um, they're swimming upstream and their problem is, is they are right there next to Ohio state. They play them every year, the last game of the season. And that's what their whole year is measured on is whether or not you beat Ohio state or you didn't beat Ohio state. And did you win the big 10 conference or did you not win the big 10 conference? I mean, this is 15 full years now. They have not won the big 10 conference. Uh, well, I guess it's 16 now cause it was back to Oh four. So, uh, that's the longest drought in the history of Michigan football. And they've got a lot of tough questions that they need to ask if they haven't already started doing that. And, you know, it to put it this way, Ohio State's dominance isn't ending anytime soon. Michigan needs to raise its level of play, its level of recruiting, its level of coaching to match Ohio State. I've seen nothing to indicate that's going to happen, though. Yeah, I think – one of the things I keep saying about Harbaugh and his staff is that he needs more energy in the program. And he infused some energy with the assistant coaches, but a lot of these coaches have never basically done the jobs they're being asked to do now. So we'll see if maybe he hits some home runs and can be uh, almost a figurehead of a good staff. And then that will raise things. And then as he sees that, he'll probably get more excited about it and maybe re revert to his, old Jim Harbaugh form that we all grew to love and hate instead of just this one that were, you know, apathetic and just like, yeah, you know, you, you wish like do something, you poke him with a stick, like, come on, do something. And he won't. And so this schedule this year, I think is pretty difficult for them. I, they, it's split into two game, two, uh, it's like six games and then a bye and then six games. And I think we've seen with this program where they could, you just mentioned how James Franklin was able to, stop things and win out. Like, I don't know that Jim Harbaugh can do that with Michigan. Like if they, if they start out zero and five, they, they, they'll finish like two and 10 or whatever. And people will just quit and the program will quit and he won't have any answers and he won't provide any, at least, um, you know, with, with James Franklin, like you recognize the issues and you attack them and you make steps to, to rectify the situation. 
And uh, these steps now, you hear some reports out of spring practice, which were completely clamped, no media access to anything, and you know, the quarterbacks aren't looking great, and these guys aren't looking great. And you wonder, like, did they hide the entire team from everybody because things aren't going well, and you just you don't want the um, the lack of excitement to become just a you know, we don't want anything to do with this. You, you, all of the fan excitement is just completely killed. And, and that's kind of what has happened anyway, because there's nothing to be excited about because you're not giving them anything. And then to see the product on the field, which I don't think is going to be that great. I, I just go back to, I don't, Jim Harbaugh is not the guy that can get them out of that. I think uh, finishing fourth in the, the big 10 East is very likely or very possible this year. Michigan won't stand for that to be the norm, though. They'll eventually bring in Matt Campbell or somebody who will then compete with Penn State to be number two to Ohio State. It's going to take Ohio State doing something to get Michigan competing for the top spot in the Big Ten. And then, you know, it's possible. We've seen it before, but it's going to take, it's going to be as much up to Ohio State as it will be to Michigan. I'll say that in hindsight, I overestimated Jim Harbaugh's positive impact on Michigan football. His first two seasons might have been his two best seasons, those two years and 2018. Uh, but what preceded him was just so awful, barely over 500 over the course of five or six, seven years under Rich Rod and Brady Hoke, that anybody coming in there that was capable is going to take the brand and the image and the resources and everything and turn it around. But he did it so quickly. I was impressed putting that together, the top 10 finishes the first two years, putting that together with his track record coming in and then sizing that up against everything post Lloyd Carr to say, wow, well, it's happening again. He's, he's making this a power and he's going to win championships. Well, he stalemated. And um, of course he was facing the guy with the highest winning percentage in the history of college football, modern college football and urban Meyer. So that had something to do with it because his, his, his record is not bad at Iowa. It's not bad at TCU. It's not bad at Stanford. You can fill in the blank of very good football programs, but it's not a Michigan record. Even Lloyd Carr outside of a 97 national championship, you would, I think he's, it's the perception that he didn't really have a great run in Michigan, but Jim Harbaugh is not winning at the rate of Lloyd Carr who was regularly finishing close to the top 10 in the nation in that range most of the time. And of course, Bo Schembechler, despite not winning a national championship, lived in the top 10 and Harbaugh is not coming anywhere close to that. Again, it was the comparison I was making between what preceded him versus what he did the first couple of years, plus attaching that to the rest of his turnarounds elsewhere, thinking, wow, He's going to do it here as well. And now here we are seven years later and it's not happening. Yeah. I, I know Tony, you know, he does his Michigan Monday stories throughout the year and has really studied their program over the years and probably has a lot to think and say about this, but just in a nutshell, I don't think they've had um, the caliber of quarterback play really back to 2004, all the way back there to where you would say um, this is a national contender, this this is a national top. They, they haven't had a guy who you would put on a national top 10 or top five contending team at quarterback, you know, what to way back. I mean, so um, I think that's the, the first thing you point to. Um, I mean, we can say what we want about Braxton Miller or JT Barrett, or, you know, people like that who didn't play in the NFL. Terrell Pryor had a cup of coffee as an NFL quarterback. But make no mistake, they were all great college quarterbacks. And I I don't think whichever one of them who is is the worst Ohio State quarterback in the last 20 years, um, which I don't even know if that's the right way to put it because they all won Big Ten championships, um, I guess Braxton maybe didn't win a uh, didn't win a, a championship the, per se, the but one. yeah, he won some division titles. I guess twenty twelve in, in, in twelve and thirteen. Um, 
I, I don't think Michigan's had anybody even on par with the worst guy who's played for Iowa State in the last 20 years on a regular basis. I'm not talking about Chad you know, Henney. a guy who, who filled in for one game or something like that. Yeah, Henny, um, who's you know an NFL veteran, obviously. But uh, I don't know. It, it just um, – and, and that's ancient history. That's 16, 17 years ago now. So um, that, to me, is the, the crux of their problem, where Ohio State's got three – blue chippers battling for the job right now. I don't know that, you know, Michigan, do they even have one? I, I mean, I guess McCarthy uh, was well regarded coming out of high school, national top 100, but um, I don't know, just, just a, 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 something to think about. Well, just their last three coaches with Rich Rod and Brady Hoke and Jim Harbaugh, their they're best quarterbacks, I guess, if you want to, it's Denard it, it is, is Devin Gardner one? I'd say Jake Rudock has been Jim Harbaugh's best, and Wilton Spate in 2016 may have been his second best. Shea Patterson, you know, did as much harm as good at times. And that's not a really – I mean, if, if that's the Mount Rushmore of, the, of their last three coaches. And uh, I don't know if that's, that's worth chipping all that granite. I, but, uh, yeah, like of, of the last – yeah, as Steve said, like any of the Ohio State quarterbacks since shoot, even Todd Beckman would be up there with with you know what Jim Harbaugh has done with his quarterbacks. So and that's a guy who got benched for a true freshman. And then you go back before that and it's oh it's oh it's Troy Smith. And then before that it's you know, Craig Krenzel won a national title. So maybe, what Steve Belisari is how far we have to go back to, you know, get somebody on the level of maybe what, what Michigan has dealt with the last few years. And this is as my, my I'll share my theory with anybody who listens. And I say it a lot, the longer a quarterback is with Jim Harbaugh, the worse he gets. And that's why Jake Rudock was so good in 2015 because he came from Iowa and came in and like, in like June and was starting by September and it was gone by January and, you know, very little impact and input from Jim Harbaugh. Wilton Spate, his second year, Harbaugh's second year, he, you know, almost beats Ohio State in in Ohio Stadium, and then uh, uh, Wilton Spate comes back and it gets worse. And we've seen that with you know Joe Milton his third year, whatever this past year, and looked like this was his first year playing quarterback. So the, that's why this year maybe things will go well because Alan Bowman, Texas Tech transfer, is going to arrive in in the summer. He's going to have very little contact with Jim Harbaugh. They have a quarterback's coach finally at Michigan, you know. So, I don't know, not finally, but they've got a guy there. So, Jim Harbaugh can stay in another room. Alan Bowman can come in. And once Cade McNamara gets benched and then, you know, J.J. McCarthy, who also won't have a lot of time with Jim Harbaugh, you know, just this he entered early. So, it, it's just not even a full year yet. So, he hasn't been impacted by the bad. Of, yeah, I guess he maybe he hasn't been poisoned. It hasn't taken effect, and so maybe he'll be okay. Uh, but Cade McNamara now entering his third year with Jim Harbaugh. I know he's come out of spring as a starter, but I would watch uh, watch out for that one. 